All right, good afternoon, everyone. We are live at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium this afternoon. The news broke earlier this morning about 11 a.m. that head coach Ruff McNeil would not be retained at East Carolina with two years left on his contract. Athletic Director Jeff Copper made the announcement be a statement earlier and he is scheduled to meet the media at two o'clock this afternoon you can see uh, the media members from our area and the Raleigh area both uh, joining us to uh, hear more on the announcement from uh, Jeff Confer. Confer is in the room with some of his uh, staff at East Carolina you can see uh, Shelly Benninger and some of the folks uh, Nick Floyd and them meeting over there Jeff Charles the voice of the Pirates of course on hand as well as we get set for the uh, press conferences Jeff Confer is supposedly going to make a, a short statement first, and then, of course, he will go on and take questions after that. But kind of a, a shocking day here at East Carolina. Ruffy McNeil out with two years still on his contract. He is no longer the head football coach at East Carolina. Had some bright spots, of course. Uh, coach made a, the uh, term famous eyeball sweat when he took the job uh, some six years ago, and uh, I'm sure his eyeball sweated on this deal for sure. He's a pirate true and true, uh, but with two years left on his contract, as we said, he will not be retained at East Carolina and once again Jeff Confer is set to meet with the media coming up momentarily he's talking with Tom McClellan the sports information director right now he's uh, getting ready to uh, make his approach to the podium as we get set for this news conference today kind of a uh, crazy deal college athletics and uh, trying to put people in the seats trying to win games that kind of thing and so we'll hear more about the uh, program the state of the program I think uh, Jeff Confer is going to talk about uh, coming up in just a few minutes and the decision to uh, not retain his head coach Ruffin McNeil coach McNeil after the game on Saturday it was scheduled to go on the recruiting trail uh, we have heard he was uh, called back in off the road and told of his fate either late yesterday or early today and as we uh, said they are getting set to go, trying to get everybody ready to go, all the cameras, all the microphones, and I believe that uh, we are just moments away from more on this news conference. We're joining you live today from East Carolina in Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, the site of so many great games through the years, and in six years as the head coach, Ruffin McNeil certainly had his positives as far as that goes, but uh, late in the season last year, late in the season this year, some of those wins just did not come. I believe Tom McClellan is trying to make his way up to the podium right now. He will introduce Jeff Confer, the athletic director, and we we will get this uh, press conference underway momentarily. More on the situation here at East Carolina. Once again, if you're just joining us, uh, about 11 a.m. this morning, the news broke. Ruffin McNeil would not be retained. Let's go to the podium now. This is Tom McClellan, the Sports Information Director at East Carolina, and he'll introduce Jeff Confer. Jeff Confer. Uh, we'll have an opening statement before following by taking your questions. Thank you, Jeff. Good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate y'all being here today. Um, as you all know, earlier today, I met with Coach McNeil and informed him that we were relieving him of his duties as our head coach. These types of decisions are never easy. However, after observing and evaluating the program for three seasons, I, have, I came to the conclusion that our football team was not meeting competitive expectations and that in my opinion the trajectory of the program was not going in the right direction. This decision was difficult because of who Ruffin McNeil is as a man. We have all come to know him as an outstanding person who is a great family man and a caring coach who has nurtured his team throughout his six seasons here at ECU. I am thankful for his dedication to Pirate Nation and his coaches and his staff who have worked hard for this program over the, over the last few seasons. We will now begin a national search to find the next leader of the Pirate football program. I will look for our next head coach knowing how critical this decision is to our current and former members of our football team. This university our passionate fan base, as well as this entire region. I have no doubt there will be great interest in this job. I'm happy to take any questions. When did you make the decision? Earlier this week. Uh, how did you let him know? Uh, we met in my office today and had a conversation, rather brief, but um, and very professional. So he found out then just this morning? Yes. Jeff, was uh, Coach Ruff want to make any staff changes, or was he wanting to keep the staff the same? Uh, as far as I know, uh, everything would, would remain the same uh, on his staff from uh, earlier conversations that he and I had had. Jeff, there was speculation that he was asked to make changes on his coaching staff and refused to do so. 
Is there any truth to that rumor? And if so, was that part of a reason why he was let go? That, there's no truth to that rumor. There was there was no request on my part or any of my staff's part for him to make changes to his staff. You said competitive expectations, six bowl games in eight years, winning overall record. What are those expectations that you have set forward? Winning conference championships. I think those are the things that uh, I feel are what we're striving to do as a program and, uh, and our football team and, and uh, everything about it should be moving in that direction. And um, based on my assessment and what I believe to be the direction of the program, I didn't believe it was heading in that direction. With the tendency of being down some this year, does that factor in at all? I think there are a lot of factors that, uh, that you see um, in, in what you're looking at as far as a program review goes. Certainly attendance is one of those. Um, as well as ticket sales and other things, but uh, please understand this isn't just a monetary decision. This is this is about the direction of our program and the prospects for future success. Uh, Chapter, if this team would have made bowl eligibility this year, would we be here right now? Um, th that would depend um, on the outcome of the bowl, potentially on, on other factors, but but certainly um, that that would have uh, given us uh, more to talk about and more for me to evaluate. Was there ever talk of having another year saying to Coach Ruff, next year is your make or break season, rather than do it now? Because a lot of people say this is pretty sudden and a lot of people are very shocked about this. Yeah, I, I understand that. And I, I know that a lot of people were shocked about it. Um, but I felt like um, we needed to make the decision now and not wait another year for what might be the same decision. And I know you don't want to talk about candidates, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, How do you know that? <laughs> well, with that being said, is there someone on the hook, so to speak, or do you have a viable candidate or somebody you're really seriously looking at rather than making this decision without having somebody out there that you really trust that you can get in here? There's nobody on the hook. Um, I, have, I have a list of candidates that I'm interested in. Um, I wouldn't be a very effective athletics director if I, if I didn't have that list. So I, I do have that list. Um, we're, we're in the process of assessing interest and, and looking at uh, possibilities, but that's something that um, we'll, move, we'll move on um, as soon as we can. How are you going to cross some of those players that, some of the current players that were really shocked about this, and um, there's been a lot of talk on social media of some players possibly leaving the program and mm -hmm. going to another school? Well, I think, I think any time you have a beloved coach like Coach McNeil, you're going to have that kind of a reaction from the team, and I understand that. I'm going to meet with the team later today, and I'm going to talk to them a little bit about um, my decision. I know that's not going to be an easy meeting, um, but at the same time, I'm going to talk to them about our future, and if they want to be a part of something that that helps lead to championships for our program. I want them to be a part of that and, and, and help us do that. So that's really what I'm interested in doing today. Talk to them a little bit about the process um, and then encourage them to continue to do well in class, finish strong academically. That's very important for us. So um, I understand that this is an emotional time, but they need to really focus on how they're doing academically as well as we begin to go into exams next week. Jeff, can you talk about some of the parameters that you're looking for in a new coach, um, some of the hallmarks of the things that you're kind of hoping to achieve in this new hire? What, what I'm really looking for is someone who will embrace Pirate Nation and our culture and the values that we aspire to, um, someone who will uh, be a fierce competitor, not just game time, but recruiting time, all times and will lead us to a football championship in the American Athletic Conference. Um, I also, I'm not quite done, um, I also want someone who understands the value of education and will demand academic success from their team. That is a huge component for me. Have you gotten your off the field issues that led to this fire and there was some word that the coach was responding directly to fans on Twitter? You heard about that? Um, I, I, I had heard 
it's not uncommon for a coach to respond to people on Twitter, but I, I wasn't aware of what the conversations might be. But I didn't. That that had nothing to that had nothing to do with this decision whatsoever. You said it was it was a hard decision. Obviously, all mm -hmm. decisions like this are hard. Right. But with it being such a popular coach, do you feel like there's added pressure on you to have made the right decision? Because if this goes awry and it turns out to be a bad decision, this falls back on you. Uh, no doubt about that. I, I totally understand the gravity of my decision and and uh, everything that goes into that. Um, that's something that I gave a lot of thought to. Didn't take it lightly. Jim, how do you trouble trying to keep the coach here? You know what I'm saying? And get well, this job being a stepping stone type job. Good what happened with Memphis, and they get the coach moves on, and then you get a guy here who wants to be here. I mean, how hard is that to jump between them? It, it is. It's a difficult. Um, juggling match in some ways but in other ways I think if someone uh, comes in and cre can create a winning program build a winning program and they look at opportunities elsewhere then it's easier for the next person to come in and continue that legacy I've seen that happen I've been a part of those those types of decisions before and and so I, I know what that can mean it means that your program is strong and that's what we're looking for is to build an entire program that will last regardless as to who's uh, the leader of it from a coaching standpoint. Jeff, are you looking at someone with uh, head coaching experience or someone who can come in as a, who's been a coordinator? What, what kind of experience are you looking for? As I'm really looking for somebody that's capable of making great decisions. Somebody that uh, has been a head coach has obviously done that. Obviously coordinators have done that. Those are important ingredients for me. Um, someone who has made recruiting decisions also is important for me. So those are some of the things. It doesn't necessarily have to be a head coach. Uh, certainly they've been, they've been in the trenches and they know what it's like, so that is appealing to me. But um, I've hired non-head coaches before and uh, been a part of that process, and uh, things have worked out really well. Uh, Jeff, uh, Coach Jeff Connor, strength and conditioning coach you know, for the football program. Is he considered part of rough staff, or is he an employee of the athletic department, and does he remain? Well, um, all, all coaches are part of our athletics department, uh, regardless of what sport they're assigned to. Um, coach Connors is a part of our athletics department. He's over the strength and conditioning program for every sport. And so uh, that's, that's what his position is. And, um, I, 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 don't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't suspect that would change. Uh, what what was the pay for, Coach? Well, you know, the, it's certainly the marketplace has changed in the last few years, so we're going to be very competitive. What was the uh, buyout for Coach Ruff? Uh, he had two years left on his deal. How much does the university still owe him? Well, based on what his contract reads, um, you know, he at some point he'll some point soon he'll revert to his base salary, uh, which is four hundred thousand dollars a year. So that will happen the rest of this year and then um, the next two years, so roughly a million dollars. Jeff, was there any outside pressure to make this decision? None. None at all? None. No boosters, no nothing like that? Um, you know, this because is... The, the reality, that, that does happen. Well, I, in, in reality, you get a lot of opinions right. um, about things, uh, uh, solicited and unsolicited, and I understand that. And But I felt like... Um, Regardless of the feedback that I sought or that was offered, I knew it was my decision. And the people that I spoke with indicated that, um, that they knew that as well. Um, and so that's, that's, how this, uh, that's how the conversations went this week. Um, but there wasn't any pressure either way. Jeff, what was the passion for East Carolina specifically? Uh, how difficult will it be to replace Ruffin? Because obviously you had that great amount of Ruffin in terms of his uh, connection to East Carolina and his, uh, obviously being, being from Eastern North Carolina. No, no doubt about it. He's a pirate. He'll always be a pirate. Um, that's, that kind of connection may be difficult to uh, replace. But I think anyone who gets here, including myself, uh, when you get here and you understand what this university is all about, what this community is all about, what this region is all about, you can be as passionate as the next person because of you understand what it means to be a pirate. And when you understand that, then I think you can, you can um, start building that kind of coalition with not only your staff, but with this entire community, and I can see that happening.
Jones is the coach. Did Ruff have any um, idea he was on the hot seat, so to speak, going into the final few weeks? Did you ever maybe give him a little bit of a heads up or any kind of awareness that this could be a scenario? I think you support your coach um, throughout the season, and uh, I, I never. I never went in and, and said you better win the next one or something. That, that's just not what we do. And I think what you need to do is support your coach and your team throughout the entire season and then take some time to sit back and evaluate it. Jeff, after losing uh, Justin Shane, a lot of your offensive power from last year, and then your quarterback going down before the uh, season has started, mm -hmm. do you think uh, uh, Coach McNeil got really kind of a fair shot this year? or? Well, I think that uh, in the reality of Division One football is that um, there's always going to be injuries, there's always going to be challenges, there's always going to be that need for the uh, next person up mentality on, on your team. And um, uh, I, I know uh, we're not about excuses, we're about, you know, production. And that, I think that's really important. And uh, so as, as we move forward, uh, we, we just need to understand that uh, this is about being competitive. This is about moving towards championships and regardless of some of the obstacles in, in your way, there has to be some progress to that effect. What's the, the realistic timetable obviously with it being a, a hot recruiting season and so many coaches uh, as far as you can get a higher in place? Well, the, um, the reality is, um, I you know, I look today, I think there's five open coaching vacancies. Um, so it, there's not as many as there were. A lot of those, a lot of the vacancies that first came, came up are, are filled. Uh, so, and I think there's still a lot of great candidates out there. So, um, I'll I'll tell you what, um, what I've said before in these kinds of searches. To quote Coach, um, uh, Coach Wooden, what what he used to say is, "I'll I'll be quick, but not in a hurry." Uh, I don't want to make a hasty decision, but I do understand that. Uh, you need to, you, you can't delay decisions when it comes to this kind of a search. Jeff, you said you didn't have any conversations prior to this with Ruffin about him needing to win, but you did say that you stand behind your coaches. What does that tell the coaches that maybe come in or your fan base that you're not standing behind your coach throughout the tenure of his contract and going through this maybe rough year? Well, I think it's a, I think it's a, Indication of what our expectations are as as an athletics department and and um, each individual sport program. I think it, it speaks to that in some ways. I think also I think it also speaks to what football means to our university and our athletics department and our fan base and how important football is um, to all of us here in our athletics department, the university, everyone. So I think I think it. Um, it speaks to that as much as anything else. Jeff, what was his reaction? Uh, he was very professional, and um, he, he got up and, and thanked me and, and Nick and, and um, asked a few questions and, and left the room. What were those questions? Can you share those? No, and really not, uh, not at this time. I, I wouldn't want to do that. Was it emotional? No, it was not emotional. It was very professional. Is there any concern about <coughs> setback that would help dismissing that coach? Well, I think you you know you always consider that obviously, and uh, what you hope is that uh, the recruits that are out there that we've um, either had commitments from or that we were involved with uh, give us the opportunity to see who might be next. I understand that that's not always the case, believe me, uh, but uh, I'm hoping that um, they see who our next head coach might be and have and give that coach an opportunity to, to talk to them. Uh, yeah, for, for fans or players or anybody. That's or disagrees with the decision today, what would, what would your message be to them um, today? That um, I expected there to be some emotional reaction to this, and I expected people not to be um, pleased with it. Um, that this is a decision, however, that was made not to be popular, not to, not to win over uh, a lot of fans with. This was a decision that was made for the future of our football program. And I hope that they understand that the direction that we want to go, winning championships, working towards playing on New Year's Day and even beyond. Those are the kinds of things that we want for our program and that we're going to work very hard to find our next head coach that can lead us in that direction.
a successful style. No, I have not talked directly to any coaches. Um, I did, however, meet with some of the coaches that are on staff now, the assistant coaches, talked to them briefly um, today. Um, I've asked Donnie Kirkpatrick to stay on and assist. He's our recruiting coordinator. I asked him to stay on and assist with calls uh, that we may get from recruits and others. Um, Dale Steele and Brian Overton will also stay on administratively to help with the transition. So, um, we're you know that, and all of them will have an opportunity to meet with the with the next head coach if they desire. Thanks, okay, thank you. Uh, there you have it. Jeff Confer addressing the media again. The news: Ruffin McNeil not retained with two years left on his contract. Uh, Jeff Confer said to the media just moments ago he wants somebody very competitive. He wants to win conference championships. Uh, that was the word there. He, the, about a million dollar buyout as far as Coach Ruff's contract. His, uh, his salary about four hundred thousand dollars per year, so it reverts back to his base salary. Of course, he made much more than that with TV and uh, other media stream revenue. But that's the uh, things we take away from that today. Uh, Coach uh, Jeff Confer also said that he wants to be quick, but he doesn't want to be in a hurry uh, in trying to name a new head football coach. And he kind of said he just wants somebody who's got a successful background, very competitive, and once again, he wants to win conference championships. Jeff Conn for addressing the media. We'll, of course, have much more coming up today at 5 and at 6 as we get set for the Eastern Finals in high school football later on tonight as well. Right now, let's rejoin CBS programming with a special report. I'm Brian Bailey.